Hey guys, we are going to look at how to use your calculator to re-express the data to make your scatter plot straight. So I'm actually going to do this with number 18 from your homework assignment. So if you watch this video, you get one of the harder problems done. You're welcome. The first thing that you want to do on your calculator is to create a new document and add lists and spreadsheets and then label your lists. So on number 18, it asks you to plot the length of the year against the distance from the sun and then describe the shape of the scatter plot. So that's the first thing that we're going to do. So our x variable is the distance from the sun in millions of miles. So I'm just going to label that distance. And then the y variable is the length of the year. So I'm going to label that length. And then I just type the data in. Once we have the data typed in, we're then going to make our scatter plot so we can look at it. So I'm going to create a new document by doing control doc. Sorry, I meant create a new page, not a new document. And I'm going to add data and statistics. And again, the x variable was the distance and the y variable was the length. So we can see that there is like a slight curve going on here. Um, you can make sure that this model actually probably is not appropriate to use a linear model by calculating the residual plot. So to do that, we go to menu, analyze. Remember, we have to add our regression line first. We're going to do linear. And then we go back to menu, back to analyze. And then we go to residuals and show the residual plot. And we can see that there's a distinct curve in the residual plot. The residual plot suggests that the linear model is not appropriate. On top of that, in our scatter plot, the line is not perfectly straight. It does have a little bit of a curve there. So because of that, we can't use the linear model as it is. So we have to re-express our data. So uh, this one, the reason why I did this one is because we have to re-express both the length and the distance. So you would actually on this one go through all of the ladder of powers. None of them would actually work. One thing I would say is that because the distance values are much larger numbers, that would indicate that you'd want to try the logarithm. However, uh, that's our x variable, not even our y variable, and typically we try and re-express our y variable, or at least that's where we start. If you were to go through all of the ladder of powers, none of them are going to end up actually working. So when all else fails, we take the log of both. We take the log of the distance and the log of the length. So that's actually what we're going to do. In order to re-express the data on the calculator, we have to go back to our lists and spreadsheets. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create two new lists. I'm going to call this one log x and the next one log y. Then in the next row where it has the equal sign here, I'm going to type in the log, so type log, or instead of typing log, you can actually go and click log. Um, it would be base 10. Whoops. And then there you can type in whatever you labeled your x as, which we labeled as dis, or I labeled as distance. And it should bold, indicating that it's a variable. And then you just hit enter. And your calculator is probably in automatic mode, so it's not going to give you actual numbers. But it gives you all of the values, kind of. Um, but that will work. It'll show up appropriately in our scatter plot. And then we're going to do the same thing over here. So you can either type log or you can click the log button by doing control 10 to the X. Again, it's a base 10 and then type in whatever you labeled your Y as, which I labeled as length. Again, that label should bold indicating that something's saved under that label. And then you hit enter again and same thing. This time I actually got values because they were decimals. Um, so that's how you re-express the data. So then what we're going to do is I'll create another new page by pressing control doc and add data and statistics again. And now on my X axis, I'm going to use the log X 
and on my y axis, I'm going to use log y. And if we look, we did have some negative values, and that's okay. But this looks a lot straighter than the previous one. So in our previous one, we kind of had that curve there. And this appears to be much straighter. And that's our goal when we're re-expressing data is to get a, a straighter scatter plot. So here I have a straighter scatter plot. I want to make sure that this is appropriate though, so I calculate my residuals. So again, I'm going to go to Menu, Analyze. And again, you have to add your regression line first. So show linear, and it puts in the linear model, or the, yeah, the linear model right here. You can see the line, and it goes through these points almost perfectly. Then I'm gonna look at my residual plot. So I go to Menu, Analyze, uh, Residuals, and then Show Plot. And if we look at this, we can see that it's random and all of the, res the residuals are really small. We have one a little bit larger right here, but for the most part they are all right here and even this one, I mean look how small the numbers are, so it looks like it's far away but it's really not. Um, so this would be a random residual plot indicating again this is the correct model. So and what I did here was I took the log of both the x and the y. And I did that by, again, in your list and spreadsheets in the equals, doing the log of my x variable and the log of my y variable. Now, if all you have to do is re-express one of them, let's say you take the square root, I would just take square root and then use like square root length. And that would end up working for that. And then you just replot it. So we can also calculate our linear model from here, so that way we can calculate our correlation coefficient and our R squared value. So we would go to Menu, Statistics, Stat Calculations, um, and then Linear Regression. And then my X list would be the log of X, my Y list would be the log of Y. Now, if you only re-expressed your Y list, then your X list would stay the same, like whatever it was from the beginning. Because a lot of times we're just going to re-express our Y variable and leave our X variable alone, but it's okay. And then we're gonna click okay. And then what we end up with is we end up with an R squared value that is almost exactly one, 99.999%. It, indicates that our model is almost exactly perfect. Um, so using the log of the x and the log of the y is a really good model. Hopefully this made sense. Um, for number 15 and number 28, I believe that you have to do, you will only have to re-express the y variable. I specifically chose to do 18 since we are re-expressing both of them. Other than that, I hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you soon.